Good morning to you. I'm taking the opportunity now of doing this video. There's a bit of a lull in the rain. Um, my voice, of course, will compete with it if uh, if the uh, rain continues because it's going to pitter patter all on my roof and drown out my words. And the Lord's word, of course, is never drowned out. God is always there to deliver it. And that's the, 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 the sort of operative thought that I've got this morning as I was driving over here. And a word came to me. And that word is consistent or consistency. What does it mean to be consistent? And, of course, I looked up some dictionary definitions. And I've got here, always behaving in a positive manner. That's, of course, uh, if you're consistently good or if you're consistently evil, um, examples can come to mind, of course. The usual suspects, Adolf Hitler, Pol Pot, Idi Amin, etc. Of course, people like that are incapable of being good. Um, reliable is another word. Steady. Um, and the most interesting of all, of course, the most biblical of all, is found in the book of Hebrews, which I'll come to in a minute. And uh, as I say, consistency is probably, for me, one of the biggest challenges in life, because how often are we not battered and attacked by the, the things that happen to us in the day, the thoughts that come into our mind, the things that destabilize us from our relationship to Jesus? Because that's what it's all about. That's where the consistency lies. And uh, let's anchor it this morning in Scripture. Hebrews chapter 13. And I'm going to read verses 1 to 8. And uh, then I've got a few verses later on in the chapter. But let's just see what God is saying here to us about being consistent, about walking in Him. It's Hebrews 13, 1. Let brotherly love continue. Well, there it is right at the beginning, isn't it? Continue. Let it be consistent. Don't let brotherly love drop into troughs. If we look at a map of the weather or um, of a financial chart, we get peaks and we get troughs, don't we? We get times when stocks are bullish or when they're bearish. I don't think I've got that right. Bears and bulls, is that right, you stockbrokers? But to be continued... To, to continue in that positive state. I'll stop when the cars pass me, so then. I stopped for a few minutes there, so to continue. Verse 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Now, it might seem a bit strange, actually, in a way that that, that verse is in there, in, in between 1 and 3, because um, possibly if, our, if we are consistent and if we are walking properly with the Lord, all sorts of things can happen. All sorts of things can take place. Um, angels can come and visit us. Um, we can receive prophecy. We can receive visions. Um, all sorts of events, all sorts of supernatural happenings can take place when our relationship to God is consistent. We don't let it drop. We don't drop the cross, as uh, my brother Jacob often says in his videos. Um, Jacob Prash, those of you that watch him. Um, but remembering to, to stand strong all the time, to remember that we walk on that narrow way, and that it's to, sometimes it's just a balancing act, isn't it, between... Um, standing and falling, but yet keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, letting brotherly love continue, and then these wonderful things can happen to us. Verse 3, remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, <clears throat> and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Standing strong with those that are suffering. Being someone that those that are suffering can rely upon. And of course it's a huge responsibility, isn't it? When we are supporting other people. Perhaps you're a carer for somebody. Perhaps you've watched somebody go on a decline. Or you've, you've just seen a loved one um, maybe fall away from the faith. So it isn't always physical, is it? 
the adversities are coming at us all the time and it's focusing on the adversities that, that cause the problems focusing on the things that destabilize us and it's so difficult and it's constantly a fight that's the way I'm seeing it this morning to be consistent is a battle to say no I'm throwing that thing off I'm not allowing that thing to affect me Verse 4, marriage is honourable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. The state of marriage, the state of Christian marriage, how often doesn't it peak and trough as well? How often don't we fall in and out of um, good favour with each other? I'm married for 42 years, and I, I certainly, you know that saying of, we've been married for 40 or 50 years and we've never had a crossword. Well, I, I tend to believe that's just a big lie. It isn't the truth, is it? In between all the fights and all the difficulties and all the inconsistencies, there is a consistency. And if we're hanging on in our marriages to Jesus, then he will start to develop that consistency in us and we will start to look away from the things that, that aggravate each other and annoy each other. These are practical things I'm talking about this morning. I'm not talking about prophecy or about the end times. These are just things that we need to deal with as Christians, that we need to get to grips with. We need to allow God to get to grips within us in making us consistent. Verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. There's that consistency again. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. And covetousness, that's a trough. And that can take us away, can't it? Because we start to put our focus on things. And we start to take our eyes off Jesus. Be content with what you have. How often are we not tempted when we see these... <clears throat> massive um, Euro Millions competitions. Oh, of course, I don't see anything wrong in doing a competition if God is in it. Maybe some of you will disagree with me. Um, money can come into our hands in all sorts of ways, but to start to, to desire it so much that we put it above our relationship to Christ is when the dangers come in. All of us would like a bit extra. We always sometimes are tempted, aren't we, to look at the extras that other people have. We say, oh, I wish I had that. Uh, maybe God hasn't given it to you. But he still wants us to be consistent. He still wants us to say, and this is why he says, be content. Because then we can look at other people's goods, possessions, and we can say, well, I, that's, that's a blessing to them. I can see God's blessing in their lives. And God starts to move in ours. He has a different kind of blessing, perhaps, for you than he has for someone else. Verse 6. So it follows on, really, doesn't it? Because he says, so, that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. There again, there's that consistency. If the Lord is helping you, we have no reason to, 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 to lose our steadiness, to lose our footing. He can help us in every situation. And the follow-on from that is the removal of fear. That's standing strong, knowing that victory is ours already and that we will continue in victory. Verse 7, remember them which have the rule over you. And actually the writer to the Hebrews mentions this quite a few times later on in this chapter. He spoke, speaks about having the rule those of us that are pastors or teachers perhaps or lead fellowships or um, we're perhaps people that are looked up to by others because they, they regard our lives as consistent and therefore we have a duty to them in a sense to, um, to be showing Christ to them. Remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. If you're going to be teaching the Word of God, then 
You're going to be, have to be somebody who people can say, yes, I can follow that person. Being a hypocrite, I suppose, is probably one of the worst sins. To know that you can speak, even as I do on, on here on this channel, and then when I've pressed the button and I've put the video away, or I've uploaded it, it shouldn't be forgotten about. I should have been learning from it myself, and those around me that hear these words should be learning as well. You should be learning from what I say if my words are in Christ and if I'm delivering the word of God. But my life also has to back it up. It isn't just about talk, is it? It's about walk. And verse 8, <clears throat> the key verse here, of course, this is the key verse. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Yes, he never changes. And that is the key. If he never changes, if, he, if we have within us the spirit of he who never changes, then we already have the ability, the tools, um, the equipment, if you like, to be steady, reliable, consistent. Um, three more verses, four more verses I just want to make mention of here in this chapter. Verse 14, <clears throat> it's jumping across. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. And I've written down here, nothing on this present earth that we can rely on as it will pass away. There is nothing in this earth that we can rely on because it will pass away. And as it says, we have no continuing city. There's no consistency with what we see around us. It's unreliable, it's unsteady, it's going to disappear. As Peter says, it's going to be destroyed by fire, burnt up as we await the newness, the, the real truth of steadiness that will come down out of heaven. Verse 15, by him therefore, important word therefore, Derek Prince often said that, didn't he? If you see a therefore, we have to know what it's there for. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. There it is, that consistency again. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. It's a sacrifice. And it's hard sometimes, isn't it, to be consistent. It's hard to keep throwing off those things, that attacking thing, because we anticipate the worst all the time. But God is saying here, just... Remember who I am. Remember who I am in you. And trust in me. I'm bringing forth something out of you. You can't see it yet, but it's, it's on its way. It's coming. And it's developing. And just to finish off here, verses 20 and 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, Lovely phrase, isn't it? That great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the eternal, everlasting covenant. There it is, that everlasting, consistent, reliable covenant. When God makes a promise, or he makes an agreement, he never breaks it. It's everlasting. Jesus' blood, the efficacy of that blood is everlasting. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. To make you perfect to make you consistent with, with his word. And the outworking of that is to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And it's the ever and ever we're looking forward to. What we see around us is fading, it's passing. But if we can take hold take hold, knowing that he is busy healing us, busy strengthening us. That's all that matters. I'll leave that thought with you today. I also just want to mention, um, you might find there are some days when I'm not on here, um, especially as we're coming up to the uh, that period of the month. Of course, um, many of you maybe don't celebrate it at all. I'm not going to get into that. But just to say that it 
there is a pressure, isn't there, in the world with, with Christmas to um, be busy with things. Uh, maybe you've got family coming over. Maybe you do have to share um, your home with people at that time. And there are things to be prepared. So um, during this time, I shall be here as often as I can be. And uh, as I was also just want to add, please remember that um, we're still sending these things out, these tracts. And those of you that have never seen the channel before, um, we put out a gospel tract. And it's all about um, what's been happening over the last three years in the, in the world. And it's all based around, um, of course, what started with that disease, you know, that 19 disease. And we speak in, we go on speaking about how the politics of the world have changed, technology, science, spirituality, leading up, of course, to what's going on in Israel and how we can see that uh, we need to be consistent at this time. This is what that's all about. The warnings are there for us. And God is challenging us like never before. So I just pray for the rest of your weekend to be good and blessed. And uh, as you look forward perhaps to family times, to special times of worship, that they will be blessings to you. And that God will start to keep you on an even keel in him. In Jesus' name, be blessed.